Hi everyone! In this elementary tutorial I'll teach you how to swap the page or site header on scroll by using just a few lines of CSS code. I have received many emails on that topic, so here it is. Hence the fact that the header swap needs some custom CSS code, you'll need the Elementor Pro because the custom CSS panel is not a part of the free version of Elementor. As usually, you'll be able to download the training file from the link in the description of this video, free of any charges. So let's see what it takes to swap the page header on scroll. Here's my initial setup. Where I have only one header with the logo and some quasi navigation. Of course, I had to add some content too in order to make the page scrollable. But that's not a real Elementor header template, nor I'm using the real navigation. Otherwise, the training file import would be much more complicated. However, whatever I do in this tutorial can be applied on a real header template or just the header of any page that is built with Elementor. Okay, let's suppose that for some reason I have to add a secondary header that, it, that, that should take the place of the initial or primary header once the page is scrolled down. The secondary header may contain whatever is needed, like an action call, quick contact, a different navigation maybe, shopping cart, user account links, etc, etc. It's up to you to decide, it can be anything. So I'm not going to modify my primary header at all, I'll just leave as is. I'll add the new section below and just copy paste a couple of elements that I have prepared before. This is only because I want to get to the point as quickly as possible and because these things are pretty much irrelevant. I suppose everyone already knows how to drag and drop widgets to the column. Alrighty, here's my secondary header. So step number one, let's make it sticky. Highlight the section, open the advanced tab and expand motion effects panel. Make it stick to the top and leave everything else as is. We'll get back to this panel a little bit later once we are done with our CSS code. Step number two, let's add the custom class name to the section. So expand the advanced panel and enter header dash two into the CSS classes input field. And finally, step number three, expand the custom CSS panel. Now it's time to do some real work. If we try to scroll the page, you can see that our secondary header gets stuck in page top, which is perfectly fine. However, initially that header should be hidden. It's supposed to be visible only when the primary header is off the viewport. There are two CSS rules that are supposed to regulate behavior of my secondary header. I'll paste them first, then fill them up with the required CSS properties. The very first rule defines the initial position of the secondary header. Because of the fact it has to be hidden initially, I'll have to move it up along the y-axis for 60 pixels. More precisely, it's going to be minus 60 pixels, which is going to be enough to tuck it under the primary header. Next, I have to change its stacking order and actually send it behind the first header. That's why I'll use the negative z-index, like this. And finally, I want to animate my secondary header. I want to make it slide down on scroll, not just pop up. For that purpose, I'm going to add the transition property and make the top location animatable. Here's how. So my transition property says that any change of the top location should last 0.3 seconds and use the ease effect. That important rules at the end are here to override any default CSS properties that were previously assigned to the target section by Elementor itself. Let's now handle the second rule, the one with an extra class. That Elementor sticky effects is the custom class name assigned by Ele Elementor to each and every sticky element. At the moment, the element itself gets stuck. Once the element or the widget gets unstuck, the class is gone. That's the temporary class managed by the JavaScript. No matter what, that's nothing but the additional class which allows me to define its own set of rules. Okay, and I'm gonna need it. So whenever my secondary header also has the class name Elementor Sticky Effects, I want its top position to be back to zero. And in the same time, I have to switch the stacking order from minus one to some positive value, like one or even more, whatever is needed. Otherwise, the rest of the content will cover my secondary header content, which is something I don't want. Alrighty, let's finally see how it works. Well, there's a little hiccup going on at the time two headers are supposed to swap. 
It looks like the secondary header makes the quick jump from the top zero position to some, I don't know, some undefined position. It seems like it tries to catch the bottom of the primary header. Now, in order to fix it, we have to use the effects offset. So open the advanced tab, expand motion effects panel once again, and enter at least 60 pixels into the effects offset input field. Why at least 60 pixels? Because the initial position of the secondary header is 60 negative pixels. It means that if your initial position is 100 negative pixels, you'll have to sort of balance it out by using the effects offset, okay? Don't forget about this one. This is very important. Of course, that value can be greater if you like to. It actually represents the number of pixels or a quote-unquote delay before the secondary header slides into view. And here it is, our swap headers trick. It works like a charm now, right? Is there any room for an improvement in general? Well, you might want to include the opacity to the secondary header animation as well, and thus make it a little bit more eye-catching. Okay, here's how. So I have to make the secondary header fully transparent initially, and then add the transition for op the opacity too, because I want to animate the opacity as well. Of course, whenever my header 2 has the additional class Elementor Sticky Effects, I want the opacity be back to 100% and thus make the secondary header non-transparent again. That one should be really simple. And that's pretty much it. Now you know how to swap headers on scroll in Elementor. Hopefully you'll find it useful in one of your next projects. Just in case, if you plan to buy Elementor Pro, you can use the link provided in the description of this video because I'm in an affiliate program of Elementor and that's how you can help me earn some cash. Stay tuned, peace and love from old boy.